Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. I'm happy to have you here as always and today is another news video and I'm just rounding up what has happened over the last few days. It's the 9th of June today, everything to do with Liverpool. A few other things as well, I've got a lot of things to get through. Before I do, please leave a like on the video and also if you haven't already and you really enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button. I'm delighted to see the subscribers going up again since I started doing these news videos. So I really appreciate it guys. Thank you so much. Now let's really get into the news. I'm going to start off by saying, where is Slot? Still, nothing has happened. Not heard a word. N nothing. Just absolutely nothing. It's crazy. He's been in charge for over a week now. It's been, what, eight days? And nothing. Not a word. No press conference. Not even a photo. Really, really crazy. But hopefully he is behind the scenes getting some deals done. There is a lot of rumours. They're coming up later in the video. Hopefully we hear from him soon. I'd like to get into the international football, of course. The Euros is happening this summer. Um, the Copa America is happening this summer. Also, Endo has been in action for Japan for World Cup qualifiers. Darwin Nunes finally put his shoot and shoes on and bagged a hat-trick in a 4-0 win over Mexico. Hope he brings that form into the next season. Unfortunately for our boys, Curtis Jones and Jarrell Kwanzaa, they did not make the cut when it comes to the England squad. I do understand that England have a lot of firepower in like Curtis Jones' department. And then also Jarrell Kwanzaa, he is only a youngster. He's only just really broke out onto the scene this season with Liverpool. Um, to even be in the preliminary squad, I thought was actually really good. But obviously he didn't make the final cut and he won't be going to Germany for the Euros. So unlucky, but I do completely understand the decision. But he's definitely going to be one for the future. And we know that as Reds. And finally, when it comes to the international football, all I have to say is our boy Trent is absolutely representing for England. He has been on fire. The friendly game against Bosnia and Herzegovina, he, he bagged a wonderful goal, just came down out of the air, waited for it, just took his time and just a low hard drive, bottom left corner volley from, a, from quite an acute angle as well, really good. Then of course England didn't do very well against Iceland, but Trent was the star man yet again. He was only on the pitch for 25 minutes, yet created more chances than any other, anybody else in an England shirt. So, he'll have to start, won't he, really? Liverpool have been name-dropped in regards to Manchester City's 115 charges. This happened a few days ago, but it just happened after my last video. But yeah, some comments that John Henry made um, in relation to the 115 charges. So Liverpool have been name-dropped in their counter suit i suppose you would call it against the premier league so it's good to know we're living in their head rent free wolverhampton wanderers petition to abolish var hit a massive stumbling block because they were the only team who voted for it in the end 19 to 1 loss every other team voted to keep var wolves were the only one who wanted to get rid of it so it looks like var is going to stay for another little while anyway again it's not really var that's the problem it's how it's utilized and also the referees the way they interact with VAR, like like the amount of confusion that happened this this season alone, like they just don't seem to have the communication down between VAR and between the referees. There's a lot of confusion. It's just not clear. And then it just leads to bad decisions. And yeah, well, we've seen what happens. There was so many terrible decisions this year. So VAR just really needs to be tweaked and just fine tuned just to make it what it can be. So I do understand the teams not voting to get rid of it. So another bit of news is the profit and sustainability rules. When the Premier League were voting for the abolishment of VAR, they also voted on bringing the, the PSR rules from 105 to 130 million. What that means is over a three year period, your team can be in debt by 105 million. And Villa actually wanted to Aston Villa, they were the only club, they wanted to change that rule so it wasn't from 105, it was actually 130 million. So it just allowed clubs basically a little bit more wiggle room when it came to debt, essentially over a three year period. That's what the profit and sustainability rules are, but they're not gonna change, it's still 105 million. Speaking of PSR, that brings me into my next bit of news and that is the fact that these six clubs right here, they all, it's a very distinct possibility they will have to sell players in order to meet those PSR rules. There's six clubs. They are Aston Villa, Everton, Nottingham Forest, Leicester, Chelsea, and Newcastle. So in order to not get fined and to not get a points deduction, 
apparently these clubs are looking like they're gonna have to sell a few players to make a bit of money. Now let's get on to the juicy bits. It is the transfer rumors and speculation. There has been a few things since my last video, so let's get into them. Liverpool are apparently joining the race for Newcastle's Guimaraes, and apparently he has a release clause of 115 million, but around about the 80 million mark is apparently where a deal could be done. So again, a very talented player. He's looked really good in a Newcastle shirt. Newcastle, again, if they need to sell players to avoid these PSR breaches, it makes a bit of sense. Next on the list is Edison. I've spoken about him an awful lot in my last few videos. The Atalanta defensive midfielder. Um, and well, he plays a number six and a number eight. A starring role in the um, Europa League final for Atalanta, which they won 1-0. Really good looking for Liverpool to replace like Endo in that number six role. He looks like a top class player. Apparently Liverpool have put in a bid for £38 million. Now that would be an opening bid, but Atalanta are apparently looking hopefully to get around £40 million. So going in at 38 makes sense. But also this would just be a fantastic signing for Liverpool. That said, I have heard that in a few sources, um, other people's videos on the news, um, but also it's then just sort of completely died off. So I don't know how true that was. It was like a big thing. I've seen it a few times all over the internet, but now all of a sudden I can't find anything about it. So I don't know how true that actually is. Um, there's nothing concrete anyway. Maybe it's just whispers going through the rumor mill, but Hopefully, like he's one of the players that I earmarked for my in my slot video. If you haven't checked out the slot video, do. I'll leave a card up here so you can get to it. Um, he's one of the players I earmarked for Liverpool to just take us to that next level. Um, brilliant midfielder. And hopefully a deal can be done. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. So then, on to the Diaz rumours. Of course, Diaz heavily linked with Barcelona. Apparently Barcelona are looking at employing a swap deal. So they're looking at swapping Rafinha for Diaz. The only thing is we had the chance to sign Rafinha a few years ago when he left from Leeds to Barcelona. I just I just don't know. I, I do think he has become a bit of a better player at Barcelona. I'm just not a big fan of the player. That's the problem. Um, I know he is quite decent. Again, I'll take that, take that with a grain of salt because it's just rumor mill. This is all speculation at the moment and Honestly, when there is concrete transfers, when there is deals being done, I'll let you know straight away. Another bit of news regarding transfers towards Liverpool. Um, I don't really want to talk about it too much because it was reported in The Sun and nowhere else. I kind of actively avoid reading The Sun and what they have to say. One bit of news interested me um, and it's Liverpool apparently slot is actually interested in signing Watkins to replace Nunes. Now, again, you see, it just sounds like a clickbaity sort of news heading, which is why I looked at it. And again, that's why I take it with a pinch of salt. But reg regardless of who reported it, I just think Watkins, I, I'm a great admirer of Watkins. I think he would be a fantastic signing for Liverpool. So that would be one to look out for as well. If, if there is any truth at all to what was said there, um, we'll have to wait and find out. Um, also, Liverpool are interested in Brian and Bermo from Brentford. Now, according to Transfer Market, he is worth approximately £40 million. Um, He's been Premier League proven. He's been phenomenal for Brentford. Um, you know, Tony was out for a long time. He really stepped up. And Tony is a mass, he's a talisman for Brentford. And for Bermo to step up and fill them shoes, well, it's quite impressive. Again, the, light, the fact that we're looking at these types of players and Bermo, Watkins, it makes me think that the likes of Diaz or Salah or even Nunes, it makes me feel like one of them could be on the way out the door. Also, I do believe that if we do want to strengthen in our attack, we do need to do it now anyway, just in case, you know, say we do keep everybody. Next summer, people will be leaving the likes of Salah, maybe Diaz, Nunes, whoever. There will definitely, if, if nobody leaves this summer, definitely next summer. So you still need people to get them in there and get them prepared for what their responsibilities are and to get them trained and, you know, get them into their role. So I think signing an attacking option this summer does make sense as well. 
One last bit of news regarding transfer rumours is Yankuba Minta, who was on loan from Newcastle to Feyenoord last season, obviously playing under slot. He's a right winger, he's young. According to transfer market, he's worth around £16 million, and it's possible that slot would like to bring him to Liverpool as well. So again, take all of these things that I've said with a pinch of salt, because until it happens, it doesn't happen. So that's everything that happened regarding Liverpool over the last three to four days. That's all the news that I could find, everything that's struck me that was interesting. That's it, put it down into a little video for you guys to enjoy. I hope you did enjoy that. And if you haven't already, please do leave a like on the video. I really appreciate everybody who does that. And more importantly, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, join the SAS. Welcome to the Slack and Armchair supporters. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. And until next time, up the fucking Reds.